I wonder how I'm supposed to watch a movie. I don't know what that thing is, but that doesn't look useful. Ooh, I know. I can use my Game Boy Advance. And that, folks, is exactly what they did. In May 2004, the first video game packs came along known as the Game Boy Advance Video Collection. And although these were not terrible quality, we will find out later on in this video that quality is often sacrificed for quantity. But before we get to that, let's try creating our own video ROM that we can play on our Game Boy Advance. A program known as ABI to GBA by Medio will allow us to convert videos into playable Game Boy ROMs. Now since this is a Windows program, you'll need to have a virtual machine or a Windows computer to load it. But no worries, if you're a Mac user, there's a video on how to set up a virtual machine, which I'll link in the description below. So to start, go ahead and download ABI to GBA from this website, which I'll link below, and the VLC media player. And once you have those downloaded, go ahead and go to VirtualBox. I'm gonna be using VirtualBox, and you should have an option right in Devices, drag and drop, and check bi-directional. This will allow us to drag both of these files onto our virtual machine. Then you can go ahead and open them wherever you put them. The AVI to GBA should just look like this. It will have a program inside of it called Medio and VLC Media Player. You can go ahead and run the installer right here and that will install it on your system. Next, go ahead and select the video you wanna convert and it's usually better if it's in MPEG-4 format, that will make it easier to convert. So go ahead and drag that onto your system. And that's what I have right here. Now comes the fun part where we'll actually convert the video into a format that Medio can use. So go ahead, open up VLC and go to Media and then go to Convert and Save. And we're gonna add our video that we use here. So here's my video. Go ahead and open that. And then now we're going to do convert slash save. And for this, I like to leave this as H.264 and go to the settings. Now, this is a little bit tricky, but what you're gonna wanna do is select MPEG-1 because that's the video we wanna end up with at the end. And then the video codec will be the same, MPEG-1. Um, just leave all the other settings alone. Don't mess with those and audio codec. You can choose MPEG audio and uh, sample rate. Don't mess with that. And then subtitles, no subtitles. All right. And then destination file is pretty much what you're going to save on the as the output file. So you can just go ahead and save that and you shall end up with an MPEG-1 file at the end. So once that blue bar at the bottom is gone, that means the video has been converted. So you can go ahead and close out of that and go check in C, and your video should be there. Now this says MP4 because I didn't rename it as an MPEG-1, but I think the file size should be lower. See, that's 12.8 megabytes. That one is 33 megabytes, so a little bit larger, but size really does count as we will discover later. So now we can go ahead and open up the ABI to GBA and browse for our movie file, which is the movie we just converted. So now we go ahead and select all files and then our video will show up. Click open and the ROM file is the file we're gonna end up with. So this will be our converted. So I'll just save it as converted.gba. You can name it whatever you want. And our ROM title is what will show up on the Game Boy. So you can just do this as like demo or whatever you want to call it. And the bit rate is something you can mess with to change the size. I recommend reading this media website because that will help you a lot with the quality and the amount of size that you're allowed to do because there is a limit, as we will find out. Once you have your settings figured out, I'm gonna go with trim, resize, maintain aspect ratio. Then you can go ahead and click process and your video will start converting. Awesome, so it looks like our video is done converting. 
we can go ahead and drag that GBA file over to here. And as we can see, we can open it up with an emulator. I'll be using Open Emu, and you can go ahead and play the game. And there it is. But for those of you out there who want to experience it on the real device, I'll be using something like this. It's the Easy Flash Omega. I've shown you guys it in another video, which I'll link below. Cool thing about it is that you have this micro SD card, so you can just stick it in your computer, put a, put a ROM on it, and then you can go ahead and put it back in. And it goes into the device just like that. You can play it just like a regular Game Boy game. Now, hopefully you've converted your first video into a playable ROM, which I think that's pretty cool. But some of you guys may have noticed that the video, it can't just be any length because according to Tonk, which is a pretty valuable resource for learning Game Boy uh, hardware and development, we know that the Game Boy Advance has a ROM capacity of 32 megabytes. Yes, that's megabytes, not gigabytes, which that's pretty crazy now that it's 2021. We're so used to having a bunch more storage than megabytes, you know, gigabytes or even terabytes. And so that brings us to something I like to call the Game Boy Advance video dilemma. We have videos that we can play on the Game Boy, but those videos, they either need to be small in length, like the one I converted was 14 seconds, or the quality has to go. So you can fit movies. There are movie ROMs like this one, Shrek from the video Game Boy Advance video collection, but that ROM was actually 64 megabytes. And you might say, how is that possible? How is that possible with the 32 megabyte capacity? Well, here, if we look at another video by Nintendrew, which I really enjoyed this video, explained this very well, we can watch this and see what he has to say about it. Taking a look at the board of a GBA video movie pack, you'll find something completely different. Instead of a regular old ROM chip, this board has two custom chips which bear a logo that reads Matrix Memory. The one on the left is where the movies themselves are stored, labeled on the board as 3D Memory. And the one on the right is a memory mapper called the Controller IC. So what he's talking about there, the memory mapper, what that chip does is it does something called bank switching. And bank switching allows us to take two memory banks, so two 32 megabyte memory banks, to hold the two movies, or maybe it's one movie, chopped into two segments. And this controller I see right here allows the chip to switch memory banks when needed to read from those memory banks. So in the end of the day, it just allows us to have that 64 megabytes of storage that we need to play whatever file we're trying to play. But that's still not gigabytes. And so there's a strategy to making these videos low quality or making them short. So yes, you can play 20 minute TV episodes or two hour movies, but they have to be 64 megabytes. And that was the largest, one of the largest cartridges made for the Game Boy period. And so this brings us to the other, other part of the dilemma is that with memory, especially back in early 2000, there's always those constraints to think of, one of which is size of the physical space and the other is speed. How long is it taking you to access that memory? And while I'm no expert in computer architecture design, I study music technology, but there are other experts out there who do have some fascinating papers to look at, one of which is this evolution of NAND flash memory. And this paper I think is really interesting because it discusses some of the architecture, architectural designs of these NANDs and how one could save space, kind of some of the designs the engineers took to save that space. And this other one talks about some of the optimizations that could be used to reduce some of the latency when using those chips, which is really important because I don't know if this is the latency they refer to in this case, but a different kind of latency might be unpleasant when you're trying to watch a movie and it takes a lot for the movie to load. You just want to watch it right away. And so that might not be the, the case here that this paper discussed, but it is important to have quick speeds when using these kind of devices. 
So I hope you guys learned a lot in this video. I really did learn a lot and I'm definitely going to be digging into these papers because this is really fascinating and I'll link everything down in the description below so you can check everything out and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.